Good morning everyone and welcome to Nib Valley Methodist Circuit Sunday Service on, on 20th of September. I'm Reverend Moses, one of the ministers at this circuit. 
and there is not many notices however uh, some good news is, is that some of our churches in our circuit are already started to reopen and also last week we had a, a circuit forum uh, in uh, on Wednesday evening uh, and through zoom uh, it's basically this update about what's going on around the circuit and also some good news stories and you are very welcome to watch it again because it's on the Facebook page in our circuit website uh, so you can watch it again before we enter into this worship I just want to ask you the question how are you feeling today as we are entering into the first week of autumn are you excited are you looking forward to it or are you feel a bit confused anxious or even worried about what this winter may bring how is your christmas going to look like are you the person who look at things in the eyes of murphy's law you know look at the worst possible scenario like looking at the off empty glass i think some of us sometimes we feel like that especially in these circumstances where we are at but I want to read a passage, a scripture from uh, Psalm 108. It talks about, My heart is confident in you, Lord. No wonder I can sing your praises with all my heart. I will thank you, Lord, among all the people. I will sing your praises among the nations. Can you really say this psalm with the psalmist? My heart, my heart is confident in you. You see, it's not about denial of what's going on around us. Certainly, I don't think the psalmist meant in that way. But despite of the circumstances, his perspective of the situation is different and the heart my heart is confident in you you see heart is co important thing in worship true worship it's not about where a place you worship it's about how you worship true worship is not about just singing or even praying it's about your heart and your soul and your mind, your whole being in tune with God's heart and his will and be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see, God says, God will not despise broken and contrite, a repentant heart. When we Come before him in that way. He gives you a new and a clean heart so that we can worship him in spirit and in truth. And that's my prayer today as we enter into this worship. And let us start with thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you for who you are and what you have done. We thank God for friends and fellowship. We thank God for all our friends and our families. We thank God for the countryside and English cricket. I, I thank God for all this modern technology that's helped me keep in touch with my family and friends during lockdown um, and for meeting with other Christian friends around the circuit for morning daily prayer. And I thank God for being given the strength to cope with each day as it comes with all its challenges, whatever they may be. We are very thankful for everything that has been given in lockdown. I am. It has been absolutely wonderful. Good kind Christian people helping without having to be asked. I thank God for that. Prayers are answered and have been answered wonderfully. With this in our mind, with a grateful heart, 
we attempt to sing God's praises, knowing even thousand tongues are not enough to praise Him. Let us sing together.
Our reading today is taken from Exodus chapter 16, verses 2 to 15. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into the desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. On the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as they gather, to gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the other Israelites, In the evening, you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that you should grumble against us? Moses also said, You will know that it was the Lord when he gives you meat to eat in the evening, and all the bread you want in the morning, because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we? You are not grumbling against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses told Aaron, Say to the entire Israelite community, Come before the Lord, for he has heard your grumbling. While Aaron was speaking to the whole Israelite community, they looked towards the desert, and there was the glory of the Lord appearing in the cloud. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, At twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then the Lord, then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, quail came and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
wilderness is perhaps a word that we can connect with, that says something about our experience over the last few months, and maybe still today. Perhaps we've experienced a wilderness of isolation or of confusing messages. Perhaps we've experienced a wilderness of hunger, of fear or anxiety. Perhaps it's none of these things. Perhaps it's something else, but still a wilderness for us. However you might wish to define your wilderness. Perhaps in it we can connect with the Israelites here. In their wilderness, they complain to God. And there is a, I suppose, a real biblical thing there, isn't there? The psalmists at times complain to God, and here we have. Perhaps we can connect to the story. And perhaps, like the Israelites, we look, though, to our past in a distorted way. They, in, in their wilderness there of hunger, felt, you know what, we were better off when we were back there as slaves. Perhaps that's like us, you know, yes, this is a wilderness, and we complain to God, wishing to be back where we were, but it, actually the back there wasn't quite what we imagine, think it is. Or then again, maybe it was. Maybe we lament the past because it was that good. And this wilderness just isn't. And we come and complain to God. Now, of course, you might be listening to all of this and saying, you know what, Gordon, that is not my experience. I can't connect to this story right now. My experience of these last few months has not been a wilderness. It's been good. It's been great. Perhaps that has been the case for you. And it's now at this point I'd like to introduce you to someone. Duncan, he's a great guy and a member at Gracious Street. He's a retired minister as well and a number of years ago was diagnosed with dementia. And I'd like us just to listen to his story now um, of, of the last few months, really. Well, we've experienced the lockdown in a, in a rather mild way, living where we do, because we've got a house with plenty of property above and below. And so you don't have a sense of being cut off from neighbours and so on, because we still chat over the fences and so on. So it's been quite moderate, really. And because of having all this garden space to work in and enjoy, you don't have a sense of being bored. There's always something to do outside. And so that's been pretty much like going on a holiday and just sitting it out. A holiday? <laughs> that's great, Duncan. I'm really glad that that's uh, your experience um, of the last few months, I have to say. I don't think I would quite put it as a holiday, but I'm, I'm pleased with it. I'm glad that that's how it's been. Yeah, whether or not uh, we've been in a wilderness, I think, sadly, and I don't mean to be negative or pessimistic, at some point in our lives, we do experience a wilderness. And that perhaps, actually, at some point in our life, we can connect with the Israelites, that we find ourselves in that place of wilderness, of um, lost, of... of of doubt, of questions, of fear, anxiety, maybe complaining to God. I think in some point in our lives, we can connect to this story. But again, just like to now go back to Duncan. Well, the diagnosis of the threat of dementia was given at a certain point, and uh, I understood from that that it would take some years to develop. And indeed, it has, is going to take a number of years to become a full-fledged problem. But at the present moment, I still feel able to function fairly normally. Um, I still enjoy reading. I still enjoy doing some of my artwork. I still enjoy the garden. I enjoy people. Um, I enjoy going out with the family. Uh, and so on and so forth. So there's plenty of interest. Um, I enjoy reading the newspaper every day and watching TV news, particularly late night, and so on. So I haven't stopped following some of my sort of more uh, in intellectual pursuits. That part hasn't shut down yet. But I guess that will come in due course, but I'm not sure how long it's going to take. And my impression 
on the diagnosis was that it would take quite a number of years before it sort of really became more serious. And we're still not quite at the more serious stage yet. <laughs> I'm delighted that Duncan continues to enjoy reading uh, artwork, gardening, and he is, really is a, a sociable person, a great guy to have a conversation with, to listen to so much that uh, Duncan has to share. Now, I'm not very quite sure whether Duncan would perceive his future as a wilderness. But, you know, in that video a second ago, he, he did use those words of a problem, of something more serious to come. And you know, Duncan is fully aware um, of what the future may look like. But I'm also struck by his faith when he considers the future too. As far as the question of one's uh, faith goes and the onset of uh, the dementia and the prostrate for that matter, um, you realize that we don't have eternal life on earth <laughs> and that at some point you're going to have to die from some causes or other. And uh, so that's not a problem in that sense. I have no fear of uh, passing on to the next life. Um, because that's what we believe in the resurrection of the dead and uh, also the communion of the saints that you will in that next life encounter many of the people who you knew and loved and who have gone before you and so there is that sort of hope of you know life with the saints in glory and uh, I think that's at the background of everything. So you're not afraid to die. And during my years in ministry, I've often been with people uh, pastorally in their last days and visited them and spent time with them. And I've not come across too many who were hugely distressed because I think they come to terms with these things. And in particular, uh, in my very early days in the ministry, I went to visit a man in hospital and he, he was so positive and so joyful and he said, just think in another week or so, I'm going to be with the Lord. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> and I was kind of amazed at his positive attitude and his total lack of any anxiety and fear about the process of dying itself. So I think I would like to uh, exit the planet in the same sort of frame of mind in due course. And uh, I've also seen some other, f uh, one of my colleagues who was actually our tutor at university for a while, and uh, I went to see him two weeks before he died. He didn't remember who I was, um, but we had a very positive last meeting and uh, he was just so much at peace with himself about whatever might happen or not happen. And uh, it, was, it was good to see that. So um, I always think, we used to call him Uncle John. He was a sort of tutor, but Uncle John just passed away very happily um, in his last days. So I've, I've had colleagues, senior colleagues who've gone before me, and uh, that's just the way it is. And you just accept that, and you don't get anxious about it or angry about it. It's simply going to happen. And when Duncan looks to the future, he is aware of what that might look like. And perhaps there is stuff there to lament, to complain, to feel fearful and anxious about. But that's not Duncan. He's filled with an acceptance a peace and a hope. And perhaps that there is something to do with the power of faith. Now, I'm not saying we shouldn't complain to God. Let's be honest, I've said earlier, the Psalms and other places are filled with people complaining to God. Let's be honest, sincere with God. Neither am I saying 
to put up a pretense to say all is well when it isn't. But I think there is something in this story today and in Duncan's story that's trying to teach us about faith, about trusting God. The Israelites had to learn to trust God. I think we too need to learn perhaps how to trust God. I think Duncan has learned something about that, about how to trust God, particularly perhaps about trusting God in the wildernesses. So whether we feel we're in a wilderness now, or whether life may bring a wilderness in the future, let us learn to trust God so that we can be filled with that peace, that hope, that serenity that can really make a difference to our lives. But I'd like to end here, not with my words, but with the words of Duncan. And of course we do believe that um, while physically or mentally one may be suffering, that there is also the fact that the Holy Spirit can indwell you and take you through this process. And that's got nothing to do with the physical or mental incapacities that develop. You're in the Lord's hands from whenever it started to the end and beyond. So that's, that gives you peace. In our prayers of intercession, after each section, there's an individual response. God of renewal and restoration, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Father God, the world you created is truly amazing. Unimaginably diverse in color, size, shape and texture. In the seasonal variations that echo the rhythms of life. Yet we know that thousands of species face extinction. And climate change is reaching the point of no return. Through poor stewardship, neglect, overuse of resources and greed. Instill in all mankind the need for rapid and sustained change. God of renewal and restoration, hear our prayer. And we pray for the people around the world. For the wonderful variety of languages and cultures that they represent. All made in your image and precious in your sight, yet not able to live equally and fairly. Not able to access the same basic needs and protection or have the same expectations. Help us to seek a more just and balanced society where all are valued and matter. God of renewal and restoration, hear our prayer. We pray for those who govern our nations, that they may think before they act, govern with diligence and compassion, and for the good of all, not just themselves. We bring to you the many challenges of the coronavirus pandemic and in Britain, our Brexit negotiations. God of renewal and restoration, hear our prayer. We pray for the reopening of our churches and all who are working tirelessly behind the scenes to bring this about in a safe yet meaningful way. God of renewal and restoration, hear our prayer. 
We hold up to you all those suffering in body, mind, and spirit, asking that you walk with them and give them hope and peace for the future. God of renewal and restoration, hear our prayer. And we pray for ourselves and our individual needs. Give us the strength and encouragement to work in your name for the good of all mankind and of the planet. Remembering that you command us to love one another as you love us. God of renewal and restoration, hear our prayers, for we ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. And we come now to the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen.
God of wonder and God of peace, strengthen us with your power so that we will walk through water and wilderness with the confidence that you not only provide our needs, but also gives us strength to endure during difficult times and experience peace and joy. Knowing this truth, Lord, let our lives reflect your glory and grace to everyone we meet this week. The blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Amen. We trust in my, my